accurately and quickly creating knit repeating pattern textures on your fashion illustrations can be a very tedious, painful process. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it in just a few quick steps using mostly Illustrator and a tiny bit of Photoshop. We're going to create a very realistic texture that looks like this. And I'm even going to show you how you can quickly change the color of the texture directly in Illustrator without having to jump back to Photoshop. We're going to quickly go through making these multiple colorways like you see right here. I'm So Heidi, founder of SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com, and I teach designers like you the real world skills that you need to get ahead in your fashion career. It's all the stuff you don't learn in fashion school. I like to call it fashion industry secrets revealed. Oh, and one quick thing before we dive into the video. All the templates used in this demo are pulled from the online marketplace I run called templatesforfashion.com. You can grab any design you need for a couple bucks. It's all artist and designer generated and everything is vector files and fully editable in Adobe Illustrator. So now let's dive into this tutorial. Now let's take a look first at what we were working with. So one of my viewers wrote in and said, I would love to see a tutorial on how to make a chunky sweater knit like I see here. She sent this exact link. So yes, you could create this manually in Illustrator by drawing the knit structure. I personally find that's very tedious and painful. I will show you a little preview of what that looks like later in the video, but for now we're gonna run with using the actual texture from the garment. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a screenshot of this. Now I'm on a Mac, so the shortcut to do that is Command Shift 4. That loads this crosshatch cursor, which I can just click and drag to create a screenshot. Now if I hold the space bar, I can move this around. If you're on a PC, you can use the snipping tool, which works very similarly. So check that out by doing a quick Google and you'll quickly learn how to create screenshots on a PC. Now, one other trick is to hold the control key down before you release the mouse, because what that's gonna do is it's going to copy that screenshot to your clipboard. What does that mean? That means when we jump over to Photoshop, I'm gonna hold, uh, con do Command N or Control N if you're on a PC, and I'm just gonna hit OK, and this is automatically creates a document that's the exact size of whatever is on my clipboard. So now all I have to do is Command V or Control V, and I can paste that screenshot. I don't have to open it. There's no file now sitting on my desktop that's taking up space. So I've just quickly copied it to the clipboard and opened it in Photoshop. The first thing I'm gonna do is make this black and white. So I'm gonna come up to image adjustments and we will choose black and white. I'm gonna leave all these settings the same. They look fine. I'll just go ahead and click okay. Now, one thing I do like to do in here that I know a lot of designers skip because you can see it in the repeat when it, they bring it into Illustrator, but I'm gonna show you how to create smooth edges on your repeat. This is arguably optional, but I do find it really creates a nice finished end product. So we're gonna come down to filter other offset. And what this does is it's just gonna move the positioning of the artwork on the canvas. So now I can see where the edges seam up. If you don't quite see it, you can adjust this value here and this value here, which will slightly move that around. I'll go ahead and click okay. And now if we zoom in, we can see where the edges of that what ultimately will be our pattern tile would seam up. And this is the harsh edge I'm talking about that we see in Illustrator. So instead of letting that happen, I'm going to use the marquee tool, which is the hotkey letter M. It's right over here or just hit M. And I'm gonna select a range sort of going along this horizontal seam. I'm then gonna come up to select modify and I'm gonna choose feather. Now the reason I wanna do this is because I wanna sort of soften the edge of where this is selected. Otherwise, we're gonna get a really hard edge when we uh, sort of do this magic content aware thing that's gonna come up in a second. So I'm gonna first feather the radius. I'll choose okay. And then I'm gonna come up to edit, fill. And this is the magic that I'm talking about. We're gonna choose content aware. And so this is a setting within Photoshop that sort of says, I'm gonna take a look at what's around this and I'm automatically gonna fill it with something that makes sense. Um, again, it's sort of a magic feature. We just go ahead and click okay. And Photoshop says that based on the pixels is something that looks good to me. Now, you can see that looks fairly seamless. We do now have another vertical seam. So let's do this again and let's not do the feather on the edge of the selection so you can see what happens if you don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and do edit, fill, leave it as content aware, that looks good. And now command or control D to deselect and I'll zoom in. 
This example was not too harsh, but depending on your texture, you can get a really hard edge where that sort of seamed up. So I don't like the way that that looks. I'm going to undo that and I'm gonna deselect. I'm gonna actually select a little bit of a tighter area. We're gonna come up to filter. Nope, what do we wanna do? Select, <laughs> modify, feather. Enter. Now I know that I need a setting of five pixels. Depending on the size of your artwork, you might need a different number in that value. And then we're gonna come up to Edit, Fill, Content Aware. We choose OK, Command or Control D to deselect. And now the edges of that are nice and softened. From here, we know this is one seamless repeat. So all I'm gonna do is do Command or Control A to select all. Commander Control C to copy, and I'm gonna jump over to Illustrator and we will come to our blank sweater. I will then paste this file in Illustrator and what I have is one perfect repeat tile for my knit texture. Now, before I actually just turn this into a pattern swatch, I'm gonna show you the trick that's going to allow you to quickly change the color without having to jump back to Illustrator. So what I wanna do is I wanna grab my rectangle tool and a fill color of something. At this point, it doesn't matter because we can always change it, but we just wanna create a fill color that is going to emulate the color of the actual sweater. If you don't have your smart guides on at this point, I highly recommend you turn them on. They're always under view, smart guides. Where are you? There you are, Commander Control U. And this will allow us to just easily and quickly create a rectangle that is exactly the right size of uh, that uh, texture that we're going to be using. Now from here, this doesn't look that great but we're gonna go ahead and change our opacity. You can do that from the top bar up here. If that doesn't come up, just come up to window and open your transparency panel. Yes, I know opacity and transparency, two different words, but this is what will give you the settings that you need to adjust for using this as sort of a color overlay. Once we have our opacity, uh, panel open, we can change a couple things. So we can first change the opacity. So if we drop it down to 80, we can start to see the texture through here, but this doesn't always give us the greatest result. It just, it can kind of get muddy and muted. So what I like to do is play around with the blending modes. Now, depending on the texture you have underneath this and depending on the color that you have on top, darker versus lighter colors will give you a different result. You might need to play around with these settings. I tend to like multiply, which looks great. This looks much better than just changing this to 80 or 50. Uh, as you can see, that just starts to get really pale. So with multiply, we can leave this at 100 and we get a really great looking result. There's other ones you can play with though. Overlay gives you this sort of washed look. So depending on the look you're going for, play around with this. I'm gonna leave it as multiply and I'm gonna leave the opacity at 100 because I think it looks pretty good. From here, I'm gonna grab my selection tool, the black arrow. I'm gonna select everything, both the texture underneath as well as the turquoise swatch that I have on top. Not really a swatch, arguably just a uh, rectangle with a color fill. I'm gonna drag and drop this into my swatches panel. Um, one quick thing I'll note is that this rectangle does not have a fill color, so make sure it's just the fill, excuse me, a stroke color, just a fill color. Once I've dragged and dropped that into my swatches panel, we're gonna zoom out. Um, I technically can delete this because it's always available in my swatches panel by dragging and dropping it out. So I don't need to keep that on my artboard. And let's actually apply it to our sweater. So this sweater, um, as I told you earlier, is pulled from the templates for fashion.com marketplace where you can buy and sell your own templates. Uh, and the way this designer has set it up is great because we've got one object that is the entire fill for the sweater. So it's very easy for us to make sure we have the fill selected over there and add the fill color of the knit texture. This looks quite large, so we can go ahead and change the scale of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the sweater and we'll come up to object transform scale. And we've got some really powerful settings within here. You're just gonna wanna pay attention to the options. You do not wanna transform objects and you probably don't wanna transform um, or scale strokes and effects because this will adjust the thickness of all your strokes within your sketch. So I only wanna transform patterns. With my preview turned on, you can see I can scale the size of the pattern. So we'll get this to something that looks reasonable and we'll go ahead and click OK. There is a shortcut for this using the scale tool. Uh, hotkey is letter S and what you can do is hold the tilde key on your keyboard. It's the little squiggly one in the upper left near the escape. Holding tilde and clicking and dragging with the scale tool while also holding shift to constrain the propor proportion of your pattern will scale the pattern independent of the uh, actual sketch. So that's the keyboard shortcut to do that. 
from here we can see we've got a great looking repeating pattern. The one thing I do wanna do, let's jump in here and uh, let's grab all the ribbing. So I'm gonna select this object here and then choose select same fill color. Once I've got all my ribbing selected, I'm going to get a nice turquoise for that that's close. Arguably, I should have made a swatch, so that would have been a little bit easier, but we're just gonna wing it by using our eyeballs. All right, so maybe that's a bit bright, but it's close enough for now. Actually, not so bad once we zoom out. So once I have the ribbing selected, now we can quickly add multiple colorways. So what I'm gonna do is just drag and drop a sweater here. I made a copy by holding the Option or Alt key while clicking and dragging with the black arrow, the selection tool. And from here, we can come up to Edit, Edit Colors, Recolor Artwork, a fabulous feature that most people don't know about. This is insanely powerful, and I'm gonna show you one other trick to work in here. You can use this to recolor any type of artwork you have in Illustrator, and the really cool thing within this feature is that we can come over to the Edit feature instead of the Assign. Um, I do have a whole tutorial on how to use this interface, which I will link to right now in the video, but outside of this, we're gonna choose Edit, I'm going to link harmony colors, meaning these two colors, which are harmonious, the two turquoises will be linked, and then I can choose a new color, and you can see everything changes together. This is alternative to coming to the assign, where I double click and I have to change the colors one at a time, which is a little more tedious and just doesn't give me as accurate of a result because I'm kind of manually choosing these colors. But this setting here, I really do like. Let's just get this a little, I'll unlink those, get that a little more dialed in. There we go, now we'll lock these again and I can really choose any color of the rainbow. I just go ahead and click OK. I can make another copy and edit another colorway super quickly. So we don't have to jump back into Photoshop. We don't have to edit any colors um, manually one by one. We don't have to create a new repeating pattern swatch. You can see it actually creates a new swatch for us every time we create a new colorway. So let's do that one more time. Edit, edit colors, recolor artwork. You could manually do it in here. Arguably, I don't think this color looks great. So let's take the color from the left over to the right and we will then just make this a little darker because sometimes the rib, I just like to have the appearance be a little darker. Um, and then we can jump over to the edit. We can lock these colors and maybe we want a nice mustard. All right, so there we go. We've got three new sweaters. Again, a new swatch right here. So this is how I personally would mock up my knit sweater texture, uh, playing around with all those different settings I showed you. I mentioned earlier that you could do it creating a vector repeating pattern. I'm not gonna dive into this super in-depth detail. If you want me to create a tutorial step-by-step -step of how to manually create this, which is gonna give you this result, drop a hells yeah Heidi down below in the comments and I will work on that. I will add it to the to-do list. But I did just wanna show you quickly, essentially how this works is you look at the knit structure and you manually draw all these little shapes that emulate the knit structure using the pen tool, the pencil tool, whatever tool you like to draw with an illustrator, and then you turn it into a repeating pattern, which I've done here by adding a pink background. I like to make the knit a little bit darker, so you can see I've done that, and then you get the sweater fill here. So depending on what aesthetic you're going for, these are sort of your two options. I find this is very tedious and is not always necessary when we can get a great, much more accurate uh, mock-up using this technique here. So yes, if you want me to do this technique, please drop a hells yeah, Heidi, do it please in the comments and I will add it to the list. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm So Heidi with Successful Fashion Designer. If you are new here, make sure to head on over to my website and sign up for the email list where I share tons of insights, secrets, tips, templates, so much more on getting ahead in your fashion career, Illustrator and beyond that you don't see here on YouTube. So definitely check that out and thank you so much for watching.